Okay guys, so today we're going to do the product you just saw in the thumbnail, which is basically a split design um, shirt. It can be a sweater, it could be pants, it could be, I guess, it could be like your arm, which would be kind of interesting, but whatever you want to put it on. It's something that's kind of trendy right now with TikTok. I think it started happening like a month or two ago, and um, with a bow. And so the design I want to use is from Designs by Juju. I don't have anything to do with them. I just love their designs. Nice company been around for a long time and um, I think they just bought another company didn't they not I think they did but anyway um, so I'll be using one of their free designs because I was shopping and then I realized oh some of these designs are free so you can try it out for free uh, and maybe pick up some other designs from them they're a great company like I mentioned so um, I will have links in the description box that are affiliate links which means I'll make a small commission for your purchase I'm still those links having to do with you know other things the machine I'm using probably the products and all that kind of stuff right um, so I went to Walmart uh, this morning to find a sweater and all their sweaters were like Reebok and they were a little more costly and I'm like what is going on here because they didn't have like just like cheap Hanes sweater like just a basic fleece sweater kind of like what I'm wearing right now this is actually my kids uh, well it's mine but the school sweater the one I embroidered Luna on the back of the head and I'm wearing it right now um, looking great still the embroidery on that um, and then I saw these shirts, so I was like, well, you know what? You can put on whatever you want. This is like a loose fit shirt, it's cotton. Um, you know, I appreciate that. Generally, you're going to want to wash your products before you start stitching, because what if, you know, it just happens to um, shrink or whatever, right? But um, I'm just going to go for it. So you're going to need something to uh, do this design on. And now you can do just on one side. You can do it on both sides. Obviously, that looks cute. You have the little splits on both sides. Uh, I was thinking about just doing one side. I mean, this kind of thing would be very cute to have, like, the design, which what I'm going to do are a pair of scissors that they have that's free. And I thought that was very cute, especially since we're crafty people here. Um, you know, you can put a little, symbol, maybe some little words about crafters cutting it up. Or I don't know, something cute or just something crafty, right? Or just another little, like something cute right I don't know um, so I may do one side or I may do both I don't know it's you know time time allows because I actually I'm getting ready to go out of town again so um, I do see this shirt does bow a little bit right here which is fine it doesn't matter you're gonna do your design right on this edge right right on the seam on the left and right side or whichever however you want I was thinking about just doing it on the one side We'll see. For sure in this video I'm gonna have it just on the one side I might follow up and you know or however we'll see what happens today so what happens with these designs essentially is that you're going to hoop this up. Um, you're going to, well, we're going to go to our machine before I actually hoop it up because I don't know if the hoop design is going to be left or right or where it's facing and then I'll just uh, you know, accommodate. Obviously you can mess around with that in your uh, embroidery software or on the machine itself. If it's the right size, you should be able to flip it where you want. Um, so I'm going to wait for that. But essentially... You know, you have your hoop, and I'm going to do a four-inch design because I, this shirt is kind of small, and I want the design to be kind of small. I feel like if it cuts the slit way up to here, it's kind of awkward, so I'm just using the smallest design. So the free design I'm going to show you in just a moment has, I think, four different sizes, and I'm going to use the smallest size. But you can imagine this is hooped up. It's going to do a placement stitch, and when it does a placement stitch, you are going to place this right on that stitch, Okay. And then it's going to do all the tack downs, you're going to put your appliques and all that kind of stuff. It's really straightforward in my opinion. It's going to be very cute, very fun. Um, I will say I'm stepping up the difficulty a little bit because this is like a, you know, jersey kind of fabric. You're going to want to pay attention to your needles. At least use an embroidery needle, which is what I have in my machine, like a 65.9, I think. But they do have some that have like a rounded head or whatever that's a little bit different because you want that for like a jersey material instead of punching a bunch of holes in this that might make a hole because jersey will get a hole in it. <laughs> um, you want a special kind of needle. I'm not going to take all the time to do that or even look at it right now. I'm just going to use what's in there. I think it's a 65.9 embroidery machine needle. Okay. Um, you know, do that with that what you will. I'm also going to use obviously applique scissors and um, this stuff because I think this is the best way to do this. So this self adhesive tear away stabilizer is basically paper with glue on it. I don't even think anything stays behind once you tear it away, other than whatever your machine keeps there. You know, so uh, we're going to use this stuff. Um, that way, when we do the tack down or the placement stitch, when you put this on, it's just going to stick, which is really nice. You can use basting spray. It might not be as 
good. It might not hold it as well. Um, you can also do basting stitches. You can let the machine do your basting stitch, right? Because the machine will go all around and hold it down for you anyway. But you have to kind of have it held down to begin with a little bit with some basting spray if you want to do that. But I'm definitely using this today. What we're going to do is, I think, go turn on the machine and see how it's placed. And then I'm going to hoop up. Okay, so we'll do that. And then we'll come back here, which is painful but that's all right that's how we're gonna do it right now what I'm gonna do is show you how I got the design uh, from designs by Juju let's go to that real quick before we go to that know that what I'm showing you can be done on any embroidery machine do it however your embroidery machine works this is all gonna be the same steps it doesn't matter if it's singer brother pull in you know Husqvarna Viking whatever it's gonna be the same well I'm talking about single needle uh, machines or right? embroidery machines so please I hope you enjoy the tutorial do not get too caught up in like oh she's using a certain machine that does not matter use whichever machine you have whatever hoop you have for the size that you want to create okay all right let's get to the design okay guys like i said i love designs by juju right now they have 75 percent off basically their whole site a lot of times they have like you know 20 for 20 deals but when something is more complicated um they usually don't put them that low for like a dollar that's usually like alphas are very simple designs simple and that there's not that many of them they're always really nice designs but also for the next few days um i already missed out on one of their freebies this one if you order three thirty dollars or more of designs you can get the snowman patchy pillow bundle for free which is really cute so you have all these designs that you're going to get actually if i click on this i'll show you um, so like I said, I missed the sm snowman wall hanging bonus bundle, but that's okay. So you're gonna get the pillow, everything to make this little pillow in the hoop super cute. And then fashionista and sticky buns, um, alphas, or fonts, should I say. And then it's also gonna come with these cute little elf and Santa Claus bibs. Um, so really cool. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll say new this month, because that's what I want to see, because I've been shopping with them for a long time. So I always want to see what's going on. Right now, there's a TikTok trend about putting a bow on the side of a sweater and then you do a cutaway. And so they have capitalized on that and they're doing all these. And I did actually put these in my cart because I'm like, that's actually very cute. I think this one's going to be a little difficult because you have to cut this part away. But I'm sure it's fine. And then, um, so I added them to my cart, uh, a new applique alphabet font with the Christmas lights. I love it. So I'm grabbing that. And as I was going through, you know, I'm not sold on maybe this one, but I do like that, even though it's. I don't know. It'll be okay. That's cute. This one's cute. Um, and they're a dollar, so I'm like, whatever. I mean, this one has Holly where the other one had a bow, and I think that's very cute too, but we'll stick with the other guy. Little tree. This one is free. So um, I thought that was very cute, especially for crafty people. Maybe you want something like this. It's not uh, Christmassy, but it is free. So you can even just come on here, grab that, put it in your cart, and check out, and it's going to be free, and you have your download. They also have this one for free, which is very cute, a free holly uh, blanket stitch design. So it's very simple to blanket stitching on the edges. It's very pretty. So um, I grabbed that. It's also free. Cute blankets and things, wall hangings, you know, they're on sale. But anyway, I'm going to keep shopping. I did want to show you those free ones. Um, I, you know, haven't really planned what I was going to do today, but maybe we'll do the scissors. I don't know if I want to do my jeans, but maybe a sweater. Maybe an old sweater. Maybe I'll stop by Walmart or something, grab a sweater. I don't know. So, uh, yeah. Let's just get to it. I threw this and I really like this. Be silly, be honest, be kind. Very important, especially right now. And there you go, guys. So, yeah. I just really love designs by Juju. Oh, I also threw these things in because look at this. How cute are these little guys? Oh, my gosh. And I love the little items here. A lot of times, like this Noel... Um, it's not a little tiny thing, you know, you can come over here and look and it'll tell you all the sizing. So you can do them 4x4 four four hoop, 5x7, 6x10, 8x8. And if you want more information, you can see exactly like how big that is. And, um, you know, the word Noel, all that stuff. And then you have images here. So you can see that it's not the tiniest thing. Obviously, if you're doing 4-inch uh, hoop, it's going to be smaller. But like you can get a nice size that can be really cute for a sweater kids shirt kids sweater whatever um i just think it's a really nice design set okay oh guys uh, you know i stopped scrolling this is the same thing and i'm sorry there's one more with the free bow embroidery font so if you want your tiktok trend you have it right there so i will also add that to my cart and um yeah and then if you do do 30 dollars of you know designs they just automatically give you the bundle it'll just be in your download so um and again you can download and 
all formats or you can select the formats that you want so um it's really nice so oh, did i not press that there we go <laughs> okay i'll keep shopping okay guys and then once you even if you just put in the things that are free um it'll just tell you it's in your download so you can download the designs and um or you can go into your um account even if you know the things are free or whatever and i mean there they are and like i said you can download them in all formats and then it just put them all there or just specific ones that you want to download in and so the machines i've been using it's xxx and dsts will work i think possibly the pes ones but um just whatever works for your machine but again you can do all formats and then just have them on your hard drive this company has been around for i mean i don't know i've been shopping with them for at least 15 years and everything i purchased from them is in my account and also um, if I already bought something it'll tell me that you already have it which is really nice because a lot of times I forget so like if I go in here it'll say um, well it's not doing it right now because I just bought it but it'll tell you that you've already purchased uh, normally so that's pretty cool um, yeah sorry I can't show you that right now <laughs> usually it'll say it but anyway let me see if it let me see let me go back to new this month and see if it's updated see purchase 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 so it's telling you here you've already bought it um, so yeah <laughs> all right okay and you know I can't leave well enough alone so yeah so once you have all your things even if you didn't purchase like I said if you just got the free ones you can go to my downloads you can go to my orders it'll be in both places and as I go um, the free ones that I had got are already in here because they're just here and again when you ordered whatever you ordered um, you know they give you the freebies and actually if I go to page one the freebies are there first so they're just there from placing a $30 order, right? Um, I did buy this little guy after all because it's so cute. But anyway, um, okay, so this is a free one. I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use the scissor one because I think we've seen enough of the bow. So let's do the scissor. It's the same steps, literally all the same, but look how cute. So free scissors, bow, side seam, download. And I think I'm going to download it in XXX. You can do all formats, whatever you want. Um, but I'm going to use my singer today, I think. So let's go XXX. And when I go to my downloads, it's right here, and then I can open it up. There's a little bit of information about it, and I think I'm going to do 4x4 four four because the shirt that I just got at Walmart is kind of small, and I don't know that I want it cut all the way up much higher than 4x4 four four area, you know? So I think I'm going to do that. Uh, they do have their tutorial. It's not on this, but it's on this kind of thing, right? I think they use the bow. Oh, I didn't realize I had a cute little bow on there. I mean, this is adorable, guys. So, um, yeah, so we're just going to do that. I do have some gray for, like, the blades. I wish I had something sparkly, but I don't. And um, I should have a light blue that's sparkly. That might work, but, hmm, we'll see. Um, black, obviously, for the handles, not obviously. I mean, if you want to make them gold or something cute, there you go. And then whatever you want for your little bow, right? So this is going to work out really well. So I'm going to do the 4x4. Four four. But that's just the info that comes in here right so really this is the file um dot xxx but if i click it open it's going to go to my sonet and i don't really care about that because i'm not going to mess around with it at all generally with these things you don't mess around with them i mean if you want to go and design something else i guess but um i'm just going to take this and put it onto my usb so once you have it downloaded you can go to your downloads and drag it to your USB, right? That file, the whole thing, you can do the whole thing or you can go in and just, you know, you can drag like the whole folder <laughs> over there um, like this, uh, you know, depending on your machine, your machine probably won't read any of these other things. <laughs> so there you go. There is some info on your color chart, like what they used. So, uh, you know, Indian Ocean, you know, whatever, lilac blue, they're showing you everything here. Um, I will say the one thing, if you do want to open like my Sonet, what's cool about that is that you can see how it's going to stitch out. So a lot of times I do bring this into my Sonet for no reason other than to just see it, but it's telling you here, you know, the first thing it's going to do is this deep rose is the uh, placement, right? Um, the next thing it's going to do harvest, that's what's probably a tack down and then, you know, all these things. But Again, if I go and I open up my Sonet, which I wasn't going to do, but I love to really explain things. I'm going to go into this application and my Sonet embroidery. Now, if I double clicked on the XXX file, it would have done it anyway, because that's the only way it's read is through this. But anyway, we can do a blank project and say next. And I'm going to use the small hoop, which is fine. And then I can go up here. I know you can't see it because 
my screen is only recording this, but you're going to go in and you're going to want to open or import a file. Um, insert, and I have all these fun things, but we just did, what do we do? Downloads? Sure. So in here, I'm going to open this up. And then I open this, and I want the 4x4, four four, not the 5x7 or whatever else these other guys are. So just open. And it should pop it in there perfectly in your 4-inch hoop. Now, I don't know if you can see the hoop is the way it's oriented. This is the part that goes into the machine, the carrier, and this is over here. So I feel like to make it easier for me, how do I want this to sew up? Actually, that might be okay. The dress, the shirt will be tucked over here. And we can hopefully mess with this in the machine if you want. But what I wanted to show you here, and I know you can't see it up here. Up here on the top, there's um, a preview, and you can press play. It says preview, and you can see it. And it's going to show you exactly what it's going to do. So it's going to do that pink line. And that's where you're going to put your shirt so that it's perfect. Uh, sorry, I had to sneeze, but that's good. So I reset this so you can see everything. Actually, I still left off the very top where it says file, edit, and all these things. But anyway, okay, press play. And it's going to show you exactly everything. That's the first thing. And then it's going to do this. And then it's going to do um, your placement for your, um, what's that stuff called? Your applique material. So those are the placement lines and things. And then, you know, it's going to keep going and it's going to do your tack down for that material. This is kind of interesting because it did it. It's going to keep going back and forth. That's why you see all this yellow, pink, yellow, pink, or pink, yellow, pink, yellow. So it's going to do that one. And then you're going to cut that away. And then it should do the next thing. It seems like it's not doing anything. Anyway, we can follow along. So, okay, there's that. And then you do your cutaway. And here's this tack down. And then you're going to do the cutaway. I don't know why it's taking so long in between. Okay, and then it's going to do the... So you can imagine here your fabric is already there. And then it's going to do the bow placement. And then you're going to put your piece of fabric there. And then it's going to do the tack down, which is what it's doing right here. And then um, it's going to do the real, like, satin stitch on the um, handle part, which I'm sure is going to be a different color. So black, because we use black. And then it's going to do all that. And then it's going to go on to do the silver, the gray. And then it's going to go on to do the satin stitch over the bow. Um, I will say, in between here, right here, you're going to need to trim that away. And before it does the satin stitch here, you're going to want to cut this away um, from your shirt, your sweater, your pants, whatever it is that you have. So we'll obviously go through all these things. So I always like to have this up. But anyway, go ahead and just drag your file into your USB, just like you do on any computer, right? And, um, oh, I will say one reason you might want to come in here anyway, even though all, you're not messing with the thing and you just, you know, for me, I was wanting to see the preview, which again was here, is that you can change the colors. So if you want to change these colors just so in your mind you know what you're using, then go for it. But to me, it doesn't matter because you're controlling that at your machine, really. So anyway so if it doesn't make sense to you the black the silver you know you you're going to want to give it some thought and you can change up the color like i said if you want the blue a different color just click it and then go into this little palette here if you're using this my sonnet and change it to a different blue or whatever i'm going to put it back because i don't really care i'll just say cancel but um you can change these colors up if that helps you and then save it, right? If you were to do that, I would go then save file and then you either save it or you export. You need to export if you're going to want to put this on your USB. So you would say export after you mess around with it. Right now it's on DST because that you know, used my pulling machine last time. But for Singer, we want to look for, and see this happens sometimes. Oh, there's XXX right here. And I would save it as XXX. And then it's going to ask me where, and I'm going to say continue. I mean, this is just another way to put this onto your USB. I would find my USB and then save it and it's untitled, but whatever. Or just drag the whole thing like you downloaded it, put that whole file into your USB and it'll open up on your machine if you don't want to mess with it anyway. Okay. Okay guys. So hopefully it's not too dark in here. I did bring my machines up to my loft area and my upstairs part of my house where I, we have like a pool table and then we have some tables that we don't really use or do anything. So I thought, you know what, this will be a good place to set this up instead of always being at my dining room table. So we'll see how the lighting goes. I might have to bring some in. So uh, let's go ahead and turn the machine on. Again, I'm using my Singer Legacy SE300. You can do this on any machine. I do have just a USB 2.0. It should work. I haven't tried it yet. This is saying to make sure you don't have a frame in there. 
a lot of machines tell you the same thing, so I'm just like, yep, it's not there. I have some plastic sheeting over there because I want to do patches using that plastic sheeting and see how it goes because that stuff is inexpensive and you have 50 feet of it by, you know, three feet, whatever it is. Actually, it's bigger than that. Yeah, three feet by 50 feet. So we will try that shortly. But for now, I just want this. So I'm going to go ahead and pop in my USB. And we'll see how it goes. And we want the design. So I'm not doing alphas. And we want it from the USB. So whatever your machine does to choose USB. And then I have an untitled exported, right? That's what it was because I never changed the name. So I'm going to click on that and say OK. And then I want, I want the 4-inch one, which is I'm assuming what popped in. To be honest, I didn't even choose it, right? Oh, no, we did. We did. We chose. Oh, my gosh. If you had brought the whole file over, you would then click that and it's going to open up the file and then you're going to choose the size that you want, obviously with the hoop that works for it. So we did save it from the MySonet um, free software. And so there it is. So that's what I was saying. On this, you should be able to turn it around if you want. Because right now, basically, it's going to stitch it the way you see it, right? Um, so this should... It's telling me to use 100. <laughs> it did this last time too. You know what? I'm okay. We're not going to do that. I don't know why it does this sometimes. Um, whatever. Either way, <laughs> that's how I'm going to stitch it. But that's why I said if you want to turn it in your software, you could turn it and then save it that way, and that's how you're going to hoop it up. Does that make sense? So I have to hoop it up like this, which is fine. So it's just facing straight forward. I probably could have just done the hooping as far as the um, stabilizer and everything, but I wanted to come show you what that looks like. I mean, it's pretty much ready to go. Um, the first things you're going to have is a whole bunch of tack down, um, what's it called, uh, thread. You don't have to change the color out every time. It's like yellow and pink and yellow and pink. I mean, you can just leave it white or whatever is easy for you to see. Like, honestly, for this project, I'm probably just use black because, um, the scissor, I'm going to do like a gray fabric with gray, um, outline the handles i'm going to do black black outline and then our little cute little bow whatever color i decide to use uh fabric so i mean just choose a, ch a color that works for you maybe beige or whatever and just leave it i wouldn't switch it out in between make sure you have enough uh bobbin here which i do not <laughs> so i'm gonna open this up i do have some black bobbin thread in here but i don't really want to have black bobbin thread i mean for this project, that might work okay. I usually just go with white. So I'm going to switch out to white. And to be honest, I do have this white bobbin thread that's already done for me from this Rich Word, from the pull-in, the company that does pull-in. I don't know if it's exactly the same, because you really need it to be exactly the same, um, you know, size 14, whatever the thing is. Like, I don't know. They are similar. I feel like... You know, they have a little bit of a different look to them. I mean, I can try it, I guess. And if it seems wonky, then I will switch it out. But, okay, well, let's try it. Why not? So, white bobbin thread. It's like any time you buy pre-wound bobbins. Obviously, it's not Singer brand or whatever. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Somebody else told me maybe I have problems with what I'm doing because of the way I uh, pull up the bobbin thread. Most machines will tell you to pull up the bobbin thread. Embroidery machines are a little bit different in that when you're switching out colors, you're not messing with the bobbin at all. So it's going to cut it off and it's going to bring up the bobbin thread for the next color anyway. But what I'm saying is, like right now, I already have this threaded with black thread. And to be honest, I'll probably just leave that because that's good for me for the tack down and all those things. So there's already black thread in here. Um, I can pull this a little bit and get a little slack going. Ooh. Okay. And then what I can do is put this down, turn this towards me. I'm sorry, I know you can't see it, the wheel. And that's going to help me pop up my bobbin thread, possibly. And there it is. And that's not problematic, you guys. That's okay. That doesn't cause any issue. When I was having issues early on with the Singer Legacy SC300, it's because this cap, I had it too tight, and it wasn't unspooling in a nice way, and it would pull, and then it would snap. Ever since I left it a little bit loose, <laughs> it's been fine. I haven't broken a thread or had any issues. So... Pulling up a bobbin thread is not going to hurt anything. <laughs> In fact, you should do that when you first uh, start sewing. And then after that, it doesn't matter. We're not going to mess with it at all. Okay, let's go back and hoop up our um, stabilizer, and then we'll go okay, from there. my friends, this stuff was just sitting here. Now, there's a few ways to do this. 
I think the best way is to leave the cover sheet on it and then cut it away the way I'm going to show you in just a moment. So let me open this up. So Sulky, the company, is an amazing company. They have really great quality products. I mean, if you want to find something less expensive, great. But just know you're not going to go wrong with Sulky. So um, their threads, everything, right? If you're not familiar with embroidery, please watch another embroidery video or like one of my unboxing videos where we're going to talk about threads and weights and all these different things, okay? But right now we're just going for it. <laughs> Somewhat. Um, so you have your paper. It does have, you know, little lines in the back so you can cut it up. And it tells you hoop this side up. So if you feel this, you know, it is, it is stabilizer. I was wondering if it was just paper. I'm like, is it just paper and then you just tear it away? No, it feels like stabilizer material. You know how stabilizer is kind of like a fabric, but not really. So you want enough to cover the hoop, of course. You don't want this to slip and all that. So I mean, you can use the grid lines. I don't like wasting, but um, whatever is it. My goodness, you think you need. So give yourself a little bit of round so that it actually hoops nicely and doesn't slip out of there. So to me, it looks like this line here would probably work for me. All the way to maybe here. So, put that up. It says hoop it with this side up. Now, I've seen people, and I don't know why, ooh, okay, um, peel this off, and then it's going to be super sticky. Okay, cool. But you're going to get that stickiness all over the back of your hoop and all over everything, because you can imagine when you push down, that stickiness is there. It's really annoying, so don't do that. So what you're going to do is get your stabilizer, because right now all we're hooping up is the stabilizer, and then, you know, your shirt's going to go in there once you know where to put it, or your sweater or whatever. Um, just get this in here. Now, I don't know if I have this undone enough. I don't. So let's, again, this is only for a quick release. This should not be something you're trying to, like, ratchet down with. I did that in my other one, and it kind of broke a little bit of the plastic. So don't do that. And that was user error. I would never tell Singer, hey, this thing broke. Like, obviously, I did that. <laughs> like, clearly, I did that. So, um, I do feel bad because I think in some of my initial videos I said, oh, you can, but don't, you, don't use it that way. I've tried to atone for that. And let you guys know every time I can not to do that. Okay, so singer up here, the 100 by 100 down here. Uh, it's something I also don't pay attention to, but you should because this has a frame here that's telling you where center is, and if you have it the up, upside down the other way, you're going to be wrong. So this whole top portion is where the machine actually will not embroider. It embroiders this area. See these little marks? So this is halfway and then there's the bottom. This is halfway down the center. So this whole area you will never embroider in. So do not hoop up thinking that, oh I should center it here because it's going to be off. It's going to be way off. This is top of your design or whatever. This is the area you're working in. Just discount that. Okay? So in case you're working with this kind of machine uh, or hoop and a lot of machines have the same thing going okay even the pulling one I use my other singers they all my brother I, I couldn't wrap my head around it I don't know why when I had the brother machine I'm like what is this thing doing I don't know why it was so hard for me to understand but again we're learning this was many years ago keep it nice and tight see I can feel like this is wanting to slip you do not want this to slip okay so I haven't removed the back or anything and honestly this should be a little more taut it's not the biggest deal okay just want to make sure everything's good. See how this isn't really caught there. I'm going to make sure it's caught, guys. Sorry, I'm going to undo this a little bit and catch it a little bit better. Because, again, I left the carrier on. It is a little bit slippy, okay? So we don't want that to slip out as we're embroidering. That's better. Okay, I'm going to tighten it up. <laughs> I'm not going to waste your time. I'll be right back. So you're not hooping the shirt. You don't have to hoop the shirt or the sweater at all. If you try to hoop this later and you remove this, your embroidery is going to be wrong. So this is it. You're embroidering on this, and then you're going to float your sweater, your shirt, your jeans, whatever, on top of that. Now I'm going to take this. Well, you know, this isn't open very much. But all you're going to want to do is take something sharp and just give it like a little, little cutsy oh through here. Goodness. And I did it a little too much, guys. Sorry. You know what's funny is that I cut all the way through, but it's okay because it's going to hold it together. Don't do that. You're going to want to just barely cut that top portion. And of course, when it rains, it pours because now my laundry's done. My goodness. Okay. Ah, that's all we're trying to do is get this. It is a thick piece of paper, this stuff. 
you just try to remove this to expose the stickiness and I'm sorry that I cut all the way through it's not gonna be the biggest deal but not great <laughs> not great try not to do that oh my goodness and then my uh, my laundry is done so I'm gonna go check on that in a minute but yeah just remove all that eh, it's not really gonna go all the way over here but you know the more stickiness you have exposed the better so I will be right back Take care of my laundry and then there's that Obviously, I did not mean to do that. I'm telling you right now with embroidering, look, I'm just going to take a piece of tape just to hold that together. There are so many tricks. It's not the biggest deal. All you want is for something to stay together. <laughs> so I'm going to put this on here to help me stick that down. That's it. It doesn't matter. Um, just quick patch and you can still use this. Again, some of this stuff is not inexpensive. You don't want to waste your product. All right, guys. Well, that's it. So we have that. We have our shirt. I have some fabrics because we're going to need like whatever you want. So for the handle, I have some black fabric here. Um, actually, I don't want to use this one. I want to use cotton. Sorry. Sorry, guys. That's poly cotton I recently picked up at Walmart. That. I think I'm going to use the lighter gray color that I have. And then the cute little bow, you guys. So I have some different colors. I bought some very generic, boring colors here, to be honest. But this one... Oh, no. How about the blue? That's cute, no? So maybe we'll use a little bit of this one. I mean, I, you know, this is a whole yard and it's going to be gorgeous, but we're just going to need a little piece of it. So, um, yeah, let's, let, yeah, yeah, let's go with this. All right, I'm going to bring all these with me upstairs. I don't think I'm going to be going back and forth from workspace to upstairs where I have my machine. I think we'll just do it all there. Shouldn't be a big deal. So we also need some scissors. Um, you know, all my embroidery threads are up there to... Um, get going all right so this thing's already set for my hoop to be 100 by 100 do whatever you need to do that on your machine and i'm going to take this guy and hoop it up so press your foot up slide that in literally nothing on there other than just the um sticky stabilizer okay so i am going to basically go for it i mean it should do what i need it to do so let's press play it's telling me to put my presser foot down that's a good thing to do and I'm just saying okay. I can say okay over there, but I just went for it. Whatever your machine needs to do. And it is doing the stitch. I don't really care about this. It's telling me to cut away my end. It's pretty much stuck on here, so whatever, fine. There you go. <laughs> Let's just, again, I don't have to t waste time saying that. I can just press play. It sounds a little bit funky because of the tape I had to put under there. And so this thing is right on the edge and it's showing you this is where you need to put your shirt. It's showing you what the stitching, I'll show it to you in a moment. Now, if you want to just bring your shirt and float it in there, you can do that. Or you can unhoop the thing, right? It's telling you to put in your second thread color. I'm going to keep it black because I do not care. Everything else is going to happen here. Again, if you want to go with like white, I'm doing black so you guys can see it. But if I was just me at home, I would probably use white because it would blend away. But I want to show you what this looks like. So um, I guess I'll unhoop it, even though I don't want to. So now you're going to take your shirt and lay it right on there. So, right, let me show you. On the pool table, honestly, we hardly ever pay pool. The only reason it's here is because when we bought the house, it was here, and the people didn't want to bring it downstairs, I'm sure, and it's nice. So we're like, oh, yeah, but we never use it. This is, like, such a waste of space. <laughs> so I was telling my husband, I was like, I should just put all my machines on the pool table. But anyway, um, you're going to take your shirt, and you're going to want to find the midline there on the wherever where you're going to put it, and line it up right with what it's showing you here, right, those lines along the, the bottom. So right down that center, that looks pretty good. Right along that stitched up line. Make sure it's nice and straight. You know, as you go up here, that it's following. That midline, I think it's okay. Again, maybe just a little readjustment here. And you see right on those lines, guys. <laughs> there we go. All right. And then once you have it down, you can pick it up and kind of look at the back and see that everything's pretty much where you want it. That looks pretty good up until it gets here. It looks a little bit wonky. That looks really nice right down that midline. Okay, 
And this is why I said you don't unhoop it, guys, because if you unhoop it, you're going to be very sorry. So I'm just really getting that down on there. Okay, let's take this back to our machine. So let's go ahead and pop this back in. Again, taking care of the shirts, not like behind any of these things. Uh, I'll, I'll get to that in just a moment. Pick that up, really, really push that in there. Put it loaded up again, getting that shirt from behind there. Make sure everything's down nice here. Really just stuck down there and that it's not at all behind any of these things. Okay, I think we're good. <laughs> I think we're good. So I'm going to put my presser foot back down and just press play because I'm not going to change out the color. Remember we talked about that. So what it's going to do right now is show you, it's going to tell me to cut the end, I don't care. <laughs> Um, placement stitches and if you don't like the way it looks you can definitely just be like oh no and rip it out and do it again okay guys okay it's gonna stop there and then it's gonna move to the next thing again we don't have to do anything right now it's just showing you we're gonna cut this away later so it's a little small cutaway it's very cute again this is gonna be another placement or tack down stitch so I don't have to do anything right now I'm just gonna say play if you want to switch out your thread, go ahead. There is no thread end, which is nice. Just make sure none of this shirt is getting caught anywhere. Okay, so it's showing you this is the placement for your handles. Okay, and now this is the placement for your little blades. I'm just going to say play. That's all in the same stitch. But the machine wants me to, you know, it jumped stitches, so it's asking me to cut the end. Okay, I'm telling you, this is where we're putting this, and this is where we're putting that. It's going to stop, because now we do have to put down our little fabric. So, let's look at this closer. It's telling you, this is where you need to put your handle fabric, and this is where you need to put your blade fabric. Now... Uh, let me grab some basting spray because I will use that, but you can just float it. So I'm just going to cut a piece of fabric from my black fabric from this gray one. Sorry if that doesn't look good. Just big enough to cover that area. It's, it's really cute, you guys. Oh my gosh, it's cute already. Okay, let's get this stuff out of the way. We don't want that hurting anything. And just, you know, grab your scissors and cut yourself a piece of fabric. Again, you, a lot of people wash their fabrics before they use them. I don't, <laughs> but... Um, something to think about. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball like I need a, not the biggest amount of this gray, but something that covers that area. That's all you're looking for. You need enough to cover that area. This is literally just applique. Okay, so that's enough. Obviously, I don't want any of this there because this is a selvage edge. It looks bad. But if I was to put this on here, the nice stuff definitely covers that area. So that's enough for there. I'm going to cut a little black piece to cover the handles. Okay, so I'm just going to take some basting spray. I'm going to spray the back or whatever of my fabric, basically the part that's going to be touching here. And I'll be right back on both of these guys. Just a little spray on the back of both of them. Okay, and you can just float them in there too, like I had mentioned earlier. Um, if you want to switch out your color, you know, that's up to you. I'm just going to put this on here to make sure it's covering that area. That looks good. Pick the presser foot up. And that's covering the area where the blades are going to be. And then this stuff, I know, does not look great on the up towards this area covering the little handles and I'm just going to pop this back down and to be honest I can just press play because I'm not switching out the color again because this next thing is going to be that was your placement stitch this is your tack down stitch so it's going around the little scissor handles very cute doing a really nice job of that and then in between here like you know since this is gray I mean once it goes to do this next part I could stop it pause the machine switch out to a gray thread but I don't really care that much so I'm not gonna do that so that one cuts off and then it's gonna do the center holes for the handles right so okay just keep going 
it paused to cut the thread ends. So your machine might do that, your machine might not do that, right? Depends on your machine what it does about thread ends. Okay, there it goes. Gonna do the other little handle. And this, again, it's gonna say cut the thread end. I don't care about that, let's press play. And then it's gonna move down to the other portion. If it just stops here, that's fine. What we can do is go ahead and yeah, it's just going to do the next part. <laughs> so there you go. And it's going to tell me to cut the thread end. I don't care. Let's press play. So all on that same fourth thread is doing all of these things. It's doing your tack down. And when it's done doing the tack down, we're going to cut away the excess. Make sure this stuff is out of the way. It's doing a really nice tack down. It's going over it twice so that you have a nice area to cut away from. And now when it stops, we are definitely going to remove this. Okay, it's done. We're gonna open this up because we have some work to do. Now it's sewn on here. So, I mean, honestly, it's really, really sturdy stuff. But what you're gonna do now is take your um, scissors and you're gonna get real close, not cutting your shirt, but just cutting away the excess that's right outside of those stitches, right? It's hard for me to do up in the air, but basically I'm gonna go sit down and trim this stuff away real close to the stitching okay you don't want to cut your shirt obviously <laughs> sorry there and then trim all this away also so these guys are rounded for a reason so when you go in it's just kind of already pointing out but get as close as you can without cutting your shirt or the stitches of course okay so i'm going to remove all that and remove this um with this guy you can come in with like a little seam ripper if your scissors aren't good enough to like get into that little handle area and just cut away again as close as you can okay guys so let me back up a little bit here um i did my best again stay right on there now if you want right now you can cut this pink portion away i think i'm gonna hold off on that because we still need to do one more tack down right now of the um bow uh and then i'll look at it again and make sure i'm really close without you know cutting my stitches so right now the next thing is going to be the tack down of the bow material so, you know, whatever you want to use for that. Um, I have that cute little floral print that I showed you guys. This is very cute, you guys. I put this back on here. Come on. There we go. Making sure, again, the shirt's not stuck behind anywhere. Now this is sewn on and it's stuck down, so, like, I'm good to go. Um, I'll put that down. And just press play. So this one is going to do the outline for your bow. I don't care about cutting the thread end. And it's going to run right along the um, little blade, which is very cute. Right along there. And that's your placement stitch for your bow material. So I'm going to cut a little piece of my bow material. And... Ooh. Um, if you don't even want to do that, to be honest, you can probably just leave the fabric that's there because it's an outline, but it's going to be very generic looking. So uh, I'm going to grab that cute material for my bow. So I just made sure to cut an area that had like the little flowers too that I think is very cute. Um, let's make sure it already cut, but again, you can take this out, but I'm just going to float this in here where I think I want this to be right there. Put the foot back down, and now it's going to do the tack down of that piece of fabric. So I'm just going to press play. That's stitch number six. Seven, eight, and nine are just going to be the satin stitches. So, uh, again, the reason it pauses is because my machine pauses to do the cut the thread end. If your machine doesn't do that, don't worry about it. It's just going to do your tack down without that pause. Um, and there you go. So, again, we're going to do the same thing, and I guess this is when I'm going to go ahead and cut this pink piece away too because you're going to want to get rid of that before you do the satin stitches otherwise you're going to have some fabric sticking out the whole point of the satin stitch is to really hold it down for you so it looks really nice and pretty without having like a rough edge you know so here we go all right like i said stitches seven eight and nine are going to be the satin stitches so the first one is going to be the black of the handle i think and then it goes to the gray and then it goes to whatever color you're going to do for your bow material so we are going to unload this because we need to again just trim around it ah okay that was not smart let's go well oh well <laughs> i'm just trying to get away from that as quickly as i can okay so again picking this up getting real close cutting all around as closely as you can i'm telling you designs by juju this is a free file and they did a double tack down the um 
sound stage is going to look amazing. It's going to have a zigzag and then the satin and like everything is so well done. They did it all very streamlined, right? Where you did this portion and this portion all in the one thing because they're far away from each other enough that you can do that. So, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and trim around all this as well as I can. And then we're going to cut this pink portion okay, so away. There's that. And again, I got as close as I could. I didn't really get in here, but I have a feeling they're going to make it nice. I mean, I guess I could probably get a little bit closer in there. I'll try. Um, this, we need to cut this away. So this is scary and a moment of truth here, but we're going to pick this up and just, again, cut as close as you can to um, your stitching. And I'm going to tell you right now, this stabilizer is very sticky and so is the uh, basting spray. But I'm going to keep cutting and I'll be right back. Well, it's pretty quick because this shuts down after two minutes and it did not shut down. So let's get this back in here. And seven is going to be, again, the black outline or whatever color you want for your handles. And then um, eight's going to be the blades and nine is the bow. So I already have black loaded up and I'm, so I'm going to use so I don't mind. And again, just cut it away as close as you can and, you know, hope for the best. Okay, so we put that down. I'm going to say play because it's just going to go in and do the black. I'm not going to cut the thread end. Just go. And right now it's doing a zigzag. You can kind of see that. It's very fast. And after it does that, it's going to do the satin stitch and it's going to look amazing. So I'm still doing zigzag again, a really nice amount of zigzag. All those things is what you want to see in a design because that also helps the satin stitch look bigger and thicker and nicer. So yeah, I mean, it's going right around that very edge. Wow, I forgot that this camera has a really nice zoom because I can get in closer still. Look at that. It's going to do everything uh, black, right? So again, I'll come back when I make the switch out to the gray. Stitching. I have two grays. I probably have more than this because obviously I have a big stash, but like, check out the dark. I was thinking about going to the lighter one. Uh, let's do the lighter one, even though this one would stand out more. But I'm going to go with this one. Okay, it just stopped and, um, you know, around the handles because it's going to do the inner part. And again, I don't need to cut my thread end, but if you have a long thread end, go for it. And now it's going to do the same thing. A nice, nice zigzag all around there and then the satin stitch on both sides. Just finishing up the black. Look at that. Good timing. So I'll go ahead and lift up my presser foot. It wants to do color eight, which is, again is the blades there. So I'm going to go ahead and thread my machine with the gray and I'll be right back. Okay, I already put my gray in there. Um, I put my presser foot down already and we're just going to go. And again, it's going to ask me to cut the thread end. And maybe I will because this one's really long. Uh, usually the machine, when it does its jump stitches, it cuts pretty short. But since I just started a new thread, it is very long. So this time I will cut it and let it go. It's going to do the same zigzag, 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 catching that whole end. That's the whole point of this kind of design. And then the satin stitch, right? So it really needs to make sure that it gets the very edges. Otherwise, it's not going to be great for your design. All right, I'll be back. It's taking a lot of care of doing that very corner because it really has to catch the shirt, the edge, you know, like making sure everything's covered up really nicely there. So again, it also has to do with how quick, how nicely you trimmed it. <laughs> but, um, it looks really good. So cute. Okay, I think it's finishing up that gray. Yep. And it's going to cut off, we'll cut the thread end if your machine does that. And now I'm going to switch out to the blue. I'm going with like a teal kind of pretty blue. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that up and I'll be right back. Okay guys, blue is in, presser foot is down, and let me cut the end. It kind of did its own thing, so we're good. <laughs> all right, it's going to do the cute satin stitch all around the bow. suspected um, in this very tight area right here where the bow you know ends and the the tails and the bow itself meet you don't actually have to get it up in there because they do it with the embroidery it does the detail of that so you don't really have to get like get in there super well which is great it's in the very center of the bow and I did have a little issue right here some of the bobbin thread is coming up and I had to re-thread the top thread because it snapped 
I don't know that that was the bobbins issue though or the machine because this thread is a little bit older and I feel like the spool got um, stuck. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's just finishing up. So cute, it's gonna cut that off. It is done, it says. And then if I say, okay, that we're done, it's gonna like move it to the center, whatever. Um, okay, well, let's just unhoop it and bring it downstairs. So press her foot up. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. It was right at the very end and I was like, what is happening? <laughs> um, I could tell that this was not moving well again when that little cap is on there. And then it had like this label that started getting stuck and I think that's what happened. It just like snapped it. So I had to just rethread, no big deal. But um, it does have some little white threads here because I didn't go back enough to cover that nicely. Aww. Okay, let's go downstairs and unhoop it. Okay, guys. So, again, with this one, with my singer, you can just unlatch it and it's a quick release. So whatever you need to do to get it out of your hoop. Um, if you like cutting it, you know, these little bits while it's still in the hoop, then that's up to you. You do have a lot of thread ends, possibly, to trim away. This one, I'm not sure where it came from, to be honest. I don't think... Yeah, it's... <laughs> it was black thread that was just there for some reason, but I'll try to make that nicer because... Obviously, it's just peeking through a little bit there. But this is what I was saying, that the bobbin kind of came up. Something was going on right there, and I should have gone back more stitches. I didn't really know when it happened, so I went back, like, 20 stitches, and you can do that in your machine, like, back, 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 or just, you know, increments of 10 or 100 or whatever. And you don't realize how many stitches these things do. So when I went back, like, 30 or 40 stitches, I was like, yeah, that's good. But I only went back to here. I should have gone back another whatever that is but the design is very nice okay so even though I had a little oopsie there I think it's very cute let's go ahead and take this away again this is nice and not sticky because we left the backing and only cut away what we needed to I will say I might have to do a little bit of cutting even though this is tearaway stabilizer because of the tape that I put on there remember my little oopsie at the beginning so I mean these things happen guys like what do you, you know I don't know so I'm more than happy to show you guys that. Now, very interesting here. You have stitches from earlier that you basically are just going to cut. So not your stitches that are left behind, but like right here, that placement stitch can be cut away. Okay, we don't need it. And obviously, we don't want to keep it. And with this one, like I said, generally, it's probably doing enough stitches where I can pull this. Yeah, even with the tape. But anything else you might have to actually physically cut, like this guy, because it was so much stitching, just cut it. Okay, so I'm just going to clean this up. And then we'll deal with the front, because we also need to clean up some stuff there too, you know. Oop, don't cut your shirt. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So, after we trimmed all that away, there's still some cleanup, obviously. There's like little bits and stuff and all that stuff. Again, when you're working with Jersey, definitely look into your needles. I can see that maybe I made a little hole right here. I'm sure it'll stay there fine because of the way it's sewn, but not great. These little fibers, you're going to want to get as close as you can without cutting your stitches. You do not want to cut your stitches. Um, but another little trick is just going through very quickly with a little flame. So let me grab... Oh, you know what? I'm just going to use this one, even though it's too close to my hand. Um, I have other ones that you can get at the Dollar Tree that are a little bit longer. And the flame is kind of weak, so it's just very easy to kind of go through and whoop, just very quickly. And then all those little bits will, like, recess. I don't know if you can see. It looks much cleaner, right? So I'm going to spend a little moment cleaning this up. If there are any other threads that we need to get rid of, thread ends and things that we need to go ahead and trim down. And same thing for the back. If there's anything else that you want to clean this up, there's a lot of little ends here. And I so will bear back as much as I can. I got rid of most of the tape. I think I have a little piece right here still I can grab. But yeah, just clean it up in the back. You know, I honestly don't cut a lot of the back, like the stitches, because I'm always afraid, like, what if that's needed or what if it needs to stay there? So I, I'm really just not that... Um, wild when I get to those pieces but there it is I mean super cute I'll try to have pictures I don't know if I can put it on for you guys if you have a picture that way but either way again do it on the other side just leave it on the one side just a little accent a little cute something with some little leggings you know <laughs> I think this is so cute uh, for a free design again this is a four inch one so it is small but it has five by seven it has other larger ones right so I mean you can definitely make this much bigger if that's what you want um, I just think as far as it being a free design they just did a, such a nice job and I'm really 
uh, appreciative of that. So, I mean, look at the satin stitch on this. And honestly, if you want this just to be like a little badge or like a, you know, uh, patch, you can definitely use this design. Just stitch it up on some stabilizer or whatever else you want. It's going to make a really nice um, patch, right? All the designs, you can think of them that way, like the little reindeer and everything else I showed you. So, all right, guys, we'll have some pictures coming up. I'll have the links in the description box, and I hope that gave you some idea of how to do these things, kind of how to look at the designs as you're stitching them out um, to know that you're doing what you need to be doing. And I'll see you all at the next one. Bye now. Look, it's right on the... Oh, I love it.